Hey guys, today I'm gonna redo a video. It was actually my very, very first ICF video, uh, just back when I was trying to have a normal building channel and I thought I would show off an ICF project we were doing. And a ton of times when I'm dealing, especially with DIYers or people who are just new to ICF, they really do wonder how you're going to run wire in these. And so I'm actually back at my house, uh, my, my weekend project, if you will, and I'm going to go through in a little better detail than I did in that video. I mean, that was one of my first probably five YouTube videos, you know, 70 some videos ago and didn't really know what I was doing. And it was, it, it was an okay video. It was actually my first video to really kind of go viral, if you will, but it wasn't super detailed and I didn't explain a lot of things and the audio was pretty bad. So real quick, I'm just gonna kind of give you a synopsis. I've got this light deck that I'm standing on here and I have a basement, or it's actually technically a crawl space. Um, because it doesn't have a code set of stairs leading into it. But um, <clears throat> I'm gonna wire down there. My, my electrical panel is down there. I chose to fur out the ICF wall down there and I'll get into why you wanna do that on a uh, panel wall if you can. Um, I, I try to plan for that if you have a mechanical room or whatever and you're gonna mount the electrical panel. It's better to just fur out that one wall um, to give your, you plenty of room to run your wires into the top of that panel. In my garage out there that's all ICF, I'm opting not to do that, where I'll have a little gutter box that mounts onto the top and gives me a place to get my wires back into the ICF. But effectively, you have two and a quarter inches of foam here, which is just perfect for a regular gang box, an old work box with, uh, without the nails in it. And you'll cut away the foam and you will insert the box into the wall and it will be sticking out about one half of an inch, just enough for your sheetrock. So it's, it's kind of perfectly designed for it. And you'll, we, what we like to use, you'll see guys on the internet using hot knives, uh, different things. The best thing I've found, they'll, they'll use routers and everything else, but a chainsaw. Um, what we do is we buy a cheap chainsaw from you know Harbor Freight or somewhere, and we use that hole in the end of the bar and we just make a little block. We usually round it over to where it can kind of just float on the wall. And that distance right there is just enough to keep me from uh, hitting the concrete with the chain. So I can zip along and give myself a uh, channel to put wire in. And the really cool thing is a uh, chainsaw width is just perfect for like a 12 or a 14 gauge Romex wire and you push it in and it generally just stays in the back of it. And that's really awesome and I'll get to why because you won't ever hit them with screws. They're very much protected. So um, real quick, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I'm doing here. I've got a king size bed sitting here and a king size bed is 76 inches wide. I've got the center marked here. So I'll just poke that in and I'll come out here and I will mark 38 inches out and that's gonna be the edge of my bed. And uh, what I want is I'm going to put a double receptacle or a switch in receptacle for a lamp. And we've got 32 inches. So I'm going to come 16 inches off of this wall here. And that's going to be the center of this box. And what I'm going to do, because you know anymore with you have a million chargers, iPhones, headphones, everything else. I also know that my bed, it's a sleep number bed on a platform, is about 24 inches up. And that's where my... Built-in nightstands will be 24 inches up, and I want the bottom of my box to be four inches above that. So I'm going to sit this right here, and it kind of works out nice. It's right along that top of that block there, so it's going to make it that much easier to get it to come out. And that actually worked out. It's at the end of a block too, so that one's going to be super easy to get out. The next one will be over here. And uh, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to come off 16 inches and up 28. And this one's a little bit less happy because I am on a web. And I'll show, that's actually good for you guys because the cool thing about ICF wiring is that I can put this box anywhere I want. You know, if I'm on a stud wall, you know, I have to block out if I need it right here. You don't have to do that with ICF, but sometimes if you're on a web, it does complicate 
breaking it out a little bit. I have no idea what that is. But anyway, I'm going to show you. So I've already got my home runs. I've got them. They're spooled up in the basement. I've got this 14 gauge for my arc fault circuit to run my lights and my receptacles in the bedroom. This one is a uh, 20 amp that is going over to a, uh, a bidet. I'll have another 20 amp that services the receptacles in the bathroom on the other side of this wall. But for the moment, I'm going to show you running these two home runs, landing them in the boxes and how to run all the receptacles and everything on around. So, okay. So after I come around the corner, the nightstands will come out to about here. I'm just going to want another receptacle, um, you know, right in here, which, uh, I'm just going to set them up kind of, kind of normal here, um, along the bottom of, and I'm just going to mark them out. Okay. And I'm going to do one more down here at the end of the wall, get as close to the, uh, the end without looking silly that I can get. Um, so anyway, I'm going to take you down to the basement after I do this and show you how I wire the cans in the uh, light deck. Normally I would use like a round box um, and just put it up in there and then use a flush mount fixture, but I have a bunch of halo cans, so I'm going to use them. I've got, I'm going to put six of them down there. It's a pretty big open space room. Um, and I'm going to use a few more in the uh, stick frame part of this roof, but I've got I've got these really cool lights that my electrician gave me that I've got. I've only got four of them. We used them uh, a couple years ago on the Shaw Hollow project. You've probably seen some of the pool work we've done there, the light deck roof that we've poured, and it's a trimless can. But these things are really expensive. They're like a movie theater can. They're uh, zero to ten volt dimmable. There's a lot more to them. So I've only got four of them. They're going right in the master, but then I'm using halos everywhere else. And uh, halos are super nice for, for the money. They're a great value. And like I said, I'm even going to use them in the light deck, which is kind of a pain in the butt to do. But I'll show you that in just a second as well. Okay. All right, guys. So now that that's done, what I'm going to do is something I didn't notice when I was talking before is that this one also had a web in it and it was actually right in the middle. I had to cut right through the web. So see, I had to slice through the web there, but you see, I'm clearing all the way to the concrete right here. But it's not that hard to do. Make sure the box is going to fit nicely. You see how it's sticking out just about half an inch. So when the drywall goes in, it's like flush. Okay. So now I'm going to grab the, uh, the appropriate wire here. And like I said, I had already fed it. This is my home run. So I'm going to get a little bit here, get it into the wall. All right. Now this is, Kind of where the magic happens, so to speak. You watch this, and this wire will lay down and go right in, right in here. And uh, I got to put it in the box real quick. So, so she can go in there. And oh, let's see. I didn't pay attention to where the box penetrations were. I thought they were going to be right on the edge. There we are. Okay. Now the cool part, I'm not ready yet because I got to run the other wire in here, but when I am, I will just take some foam and I'll jam it around into places to hold it in place. Then I'll foam it in and it's locked in as tight as anything you'll ever want to see. So the cool part you can use, these are blunt enough. You can push them, you can push your wire back in with those. Let me uh, come real close in here. You see how far back in there that is? And the cool part, you can see right up in here where we have a web. If you were to try to screw and you were unfortunate enough to put a screw right where the wire is, first off, you're using one and a quarter, one and five eighths screws typically to put drywall up. Even if you hit right there, now there's no web, it's gone. So that it would be just like missing the stud altogether. 
the screw would just, it would have nothing to pull it into that wire even if it was long enough. But you see, you'd have to be over two inches long to even touch that wire. So it's generally safer than any wire in a uh, stud wall that could be, you know, looped a little closer to the sheetrock and everything. So I'll put this thing on time lapse and go ahead and wire the rest of this. I'm also going to pull that, uh, the, uh, the other home run over to the bidet and do the, do the bathroom home run. I'm going to try to land all my home runs today, get my panel put together. But after I do this one, we'll talk for a second, and then I'll take you down to the basement and uh, show you kind of how we do the ceiling cans and light deck. Okay. Okay, guys. So I'm not quite done running them, but I want to show you guys some uh, stuff with the panels. So you can see what you end up with. Um, you kind of just get it situated perfectly square. Like I said, I, I put in a uh, little pieces of Romex and foam to hold it. And then I just simply uh, put the foam around it. Okay, and go under. Okay. And then I just fill in Trying to do this while I'm shooting a video is kind of fun. But anyway, we're just going to, and I'm going, and it's very, and my foam is cold too, so it's not going as fast as it normally would be. You see I'm holding, that wire's pushed all the way back in there. And this is going to expand out and hold it where it can't move. So, and you're just going to sheetrock right over that, and you're golden. All right, you see I've, uh, I've got a little 20 amp circuit running around here in the basement. And this one wall here is furred out. And the reason I did that is because uh, I want the panel, you just sort of see it's effectively sticking out just real flush with the wall. So once they drywall the lid, it'll mount right to it and it'll be nice and tight. The panels are like three and a half inches thick. They're like the thickness of a stud. And you can see the knockout at the top. If I tried to place that inside the ICF, it generally won't. It'll be sticking out, you know, a little bit past and, you know, any kind of conduit. This is coming in for, it's an offset service. So um, the one that I'm doing in my garage won't be offset. The, the LB will come in right at the bottom of it. Um, but I'll, I'll take you out there real quick and show you the difference of how that looks and why if you're designing an equipment room, if, if it's in the garage, you're probably stud walls anyway. But if you're in your basement, just try to you know, account, uh, you know, account for that extra four inches and just fur the wall out, just on that one wall where the equipment or the uh, panel's going, and it makes your life a ton easier. Okay, so this is the basement or the crawl space as it is because I obviously only have a uh, very steep way out here and I'm gonna have a very tight spiral that doesn't meet code here. So it can't technically be a basement. I'm not supposed to have any amenities down here. Um, so it's just a crawl space with equipment. Got something in my eye, you know what I mean? Um, but anyways, I'm putting can lights in the light deck. Um, and just like upstairs, we're using the chainsaw to cut a groove that nicely holds the, uh, the Romex in place. Um, and then I just have to cut out a, a spot big enough for, for, the, uh, for the halo can. And uh, I'm just uh, simply taking the uh, nail bars out because they don't really go anywhere. So I'm, this is actually my last one. I have six cans going in here. I'll show you just how they temporarily look with just a regular uh, LED bulb in there. But that'll be what I work under. Right now I'm using the big DeWalt tower, but I can't wait to get off batteries and actually have a hardwired light. Well, the time lapse cut off, but you can at least get a feel for kind of, you just kind of carve in, do what you got to do. I'd say a can light's got to be about the biggest pain. Um, they make a lot of easier, um, even disc lights, you know, little puck lights that look just like a can, but you mount them into a uh, gang box, which is much, much easier. Because even uh, these can lights required me to carve through the light deck and into the four inch cap to get them to clear, which is way more than almost any other light. I just so happened to have the halos and wanted to make use of them. 
So I'll keep going with the wiring, just show you as much as I can this week on that. And then uh, I'm also going to show you next week siding um, on, on, uh, on, the, on ICF on the outside. So kind of showing you guys some, uh, you know, less high end finishes than we're used to on this channel and just kind of showing you how, you know, DIYers or whatever might, uh, you know, apply these finishes to an ICF project. Okay guys, so I just wanted to bring you in here. I got this all prepped for my electrician it's coming on Monday. We do have to uh, core a hole right where this knockout is at the bottom to bring in our service from outside. But you can see what happens when you stick this in. It's kind of nice because you know most of these panels are made to go between a 16 inch center stud wall. So our webs being on six, our 12 inch centers, you end up having to just remove one web. And uh, one thing I was pretty happy about is this concrete is like, looks really good you know it, there's there's no voids at all in it so um that's that's a testament to my boys and uh the concrete plant but still anyway so what i have to do here you can see how much room over here it's about an inch and a half sticking out which makes all these knockouts up here kind of out into the the world so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to have a gutter made up here so that it's basically extend the box up to where i can get all my wires in because I don't want to have to fur out a 30 foot long, 10 or 12 foot high wall in my garage and just and lose the space and just have to deal with it. I could, I mean, it's an inch and a half. I can just slap two by fours on their side. Again, it's more money, whatever. I don't care to have this sticking out a little bit. I'll probably have like pegboard on, you know, different stuff on the wall anyway. In the shop, it doesn't matter so much, but just understand that that is why I'm telling you to fur out the walls if you can, um, you know, because you've got this, this issue, if not. 